Hi everybody. Welcome back to Abnormal Psychology and we're going to look at treatment for schizophrenia. Now the short form on this is there is no cure for schizophrenia. So the treatments for schizophrenia are typically multi-dimensional just meaning that it's not just going to be just biological or just behavioral it'll be a combination and so it involves a mix of the biological the psychological and rehabilitation approaches and we're going to start with the biological approaches antipsychotic medication is not a cure but it tends to stem the more flagrant aspects of the disorder and to reduce the need for hospitalization and the risk of reoccurrent episodes. So medication has a role. Today, the most common neuroleptics, phenothiazine, chloropromazine, um, thrazidine, trifl trifluoroprozine, pyrazine, sorry, and they appear to block dopamine and the dopamine centers in the brain and that's really important thus reducing the elevated dopamine effect which can in extraordinary cases like schizophrenia produce hallucinations and delusions so there are risks of course to using neuroleptic, neuroleptic medication for much too long and that's the risk because schizophrenia there's no cure so if you're on a drug you might be on a drug for a long time and there are risks to being on the same drug for a long period of time. It's known as tardive dyskinesia or TD and it's the major risk for extended use of neuroleptics. TD is got, uh, it will, how it looks, actually it looks a lot like Tourette's but it's not Tourette's. There are involuntary movements of body parts it might be excessive blinking, uh, facial tics, lip smacking. It, like I said, can resemble Tourette's, but it's not. Medication needs to be carefully managed, and with people from uh, with and with people suffering from schizophrenia, it it can be very difficult to manage. So we, we always keep in the back of the mind that biologicals will be used, but they will be paired with any number of other strategies and we'll start with other strategies like psychoanalytic approaches. Now the psychoanalytic approaches in this instance have not shown to be very effective in treating schizophrenia. It's difficult to get at some of the root issues around how far back might some of the trauma that may have experienced or the stressors that may have prompted schizophrenia to emerge so it's been difficult. However, learning-based approaches, well, they've had a little more effect. And surprisingly, one that's been fairly successful is one that's often used in public schools, and it's known as token economy systems. So with the learning approaches, using to token economy systems and cognitive behavioral interventions such as social skills training, have achieved some successes in increasing the adaptive behavior among people with schizophrenia. It's important to note that with schizophrenia, it's still a wide range of people who absolutely need support to people who could live relatively normal lives. And so some of this will have more impact on some people than it will on others with schizophrenia. The token economy system is used, um, it's been shown to have some early promise. Uh, the use of tokens and the learning of token based um, on demonstrating pro-social behavior. So the idea in token economy is you, you, when you produce the appropriate behavior that's being targeted, something pro-social, being positive and engaging, gets you a token and every time you engage in this behavior you get a token at the end of the day or the end of the week you can cash your tokens in for a reward and this is somehow having some positive and good effect on producing better social functioning and reducing psychotic behavior so that in itself is showing some promise the cognitive behavior therapy with social skills training can include teaching individuals to manage stress better 
and show how to manage their symptoms. Like I said, it's not going to be cured and medication can reduce some of those symptoms. Then it's about how to learn to manage the remaining symptoms to still be able to live a life reasonably well. There have been some hope demonstrated by using these techniques. Now I represent, or I touched on pro-social behavior. There is a pro-social rehabilitation strategy. These pro-social rehabilitation approaches help people with schizophrenia adapt more successfully to occupational and social roles in the community. Self-help groups in more structured pro-social rehab centers, self-learning, um, learning self-reliant skills, things like cooking, shopping, use of buses and taxis, can help people integrate into a community more successfully. Because schizophrenia works within people's families, family intervention programs become important. Family intervention programs help families cope with the burden of care, how to communicate more clearly and learn more helpful ways of relating with the patient or their son, daughter, or partner. The introduction of structure family intervention programs shows a reduction in the relapse of schizophrenia episodes. So that becomes very important. And lastly, we'll touch on is the early intervention programs. There are at least, well, there's two forms of early intervention programs. The first is to initiate treatment as soon as possible once the person has developed some of the symptoms, positive and negative, of schizophrenia. And the second is to intervene before the onset of schizophrenia. It's a primary prevention program. Now that's really difficult to target for all people because not all people will be able to anticipate. And so some of it is family history and then some of it is some of the early sort of disturbing signs you might see in behavior and because of some family history you might early alert to let's consider where this might lead and what this might be and look for some diagnosis or not diagnosis. Again, in this particular junk juncture, and I think um, the journal that you'll see in journal five, which includes two examples of people with schizophrenia, will I hope give you a broader view of what might a person living with schizophrenia, um, their life be like. Uh, not everybody is like that person you might know from the streets where you've seen somebody that behaves oddly and you might say, well, that's somebody with schizophrenia. That's not the only way that people are with schizophrenia. So it's very complex. It's on a continuum. And uh, there is, it's, it, because of the complex issues, it makes it very difficult to manage. So. I hope this has been helpful. I hope you're on the right foot. We're getting close to the end here. We have one more chapter to go where we're going to look at disabilities or abnormal behavior across the lifespan. All right, everybody. Keep up the good work and we'll see you next week. Bye now.